So I've, uh, I know I've said this numerous times in, in, uh, since we started this project that this was my last log to peel. Well, this was my last log to peel. So I have my floor joists done. I've got my sill logs here. My upright's around the corner and I started my first fire to melt some of the frost to dig the four holes I need for my uprights. So my next step here is to um, sort of eyeball that corner one and that's gonna work. That'll be a reference point. Now I'm going to stake out uh, the balance and I'm going to get uh, three more fires started. Oh, there's some frost in that ground. What I'm uh, doing here is I'm squaring up the front using my first fire as a reference, uh, the holes will be much bigger. So obviously, uh, once I get the holes and poles in, I'll have to square everything up again, but it gives me a ballpark area of where to set my next three fires. And uh, then we'll get our pickaxe out and start shoveling it up. So the thing I'm coiling here is called a, a burden strap or a tump line. And next to the saw, my my buck saw and my axe, it's probably been the most used tool on my, my cabin build here. Uh, from a living historian perspective, anybody that does living archaeology and ventures off into the hinterland uh, using 18th century accoutrements, this is an item that they should carry. And I suspect pretty much everyone carried one. Its applications were almost endless. Uh, a primary use would have been used to bring in bundles of firewood. So you break your firewood off, you wouldn't uh, use an axe so much to cut it, takes too much energy. You break your firewood off, put it in bundles about four feet long, put the big bundle over your shoulder and bring it back to camp. And I use that frequently for my winter trekking. Uh, it can be used as a painter on a canoe to line it through rapids. Uh, you can use it to haul in big game. Uh, obviously you've seen me use it as a measuring tool on our build. Um, yeah, its applications are, are almost endless. It uh, can be used as a strong back to string a tarp or a blanket over for emergency shelter. Um, and I've used it for all those applications. The one I haven't used, and it was commonly used in the turbulent time of the 1700s, would have been as a prisoner strap. So I haven't, I haven't really found an application for that yet. hope I don't have to, but... Anyway, it is a very useful tool and something that uh, if you're doing living archaeology and trying to actually live the time period of the 17, 1800s, it would be an item that should be in your kit. So this is uh, probably the easiest job I've had since I started this project. I'm simply tending four fires that are melting the frost for my uprights for the veranda. Someone recently asked me what was one of the harder aspects of the build or would it have been like in the, in the 1700s? And you might think it's like <laughs> dragging these logs out by hand or peeling them or lifting them. The fact is uh, that one of the hardest things was building it in moccasins. 
and uh, Europeans that would have arrived on the frontier may have had uh, European footwear of some style at the time, but they quickly wore out and, and there weren't uh, shoemakers about to fix them. So they very quickly adapted uh, the native moccasin. So I have taken a bit of liberty, I think, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that they probably did this. So between the layers, the two sole layers on the shoe packs of winter moccasins, I sew in a strip of birch bark. So the birch bark canoes that we build, they don't leak. And uh, vessels that the natives used to hold liquids didn't leak. So it just made sense to me to help waterproof them. So I use bare fat to grease them, which helps make them water resistant. So as long as it's really cold, uh, the moccasins stay dry. But if it gets warm, like today it's warmed up pretty good and um, moccasins are getting a little, little on the dampish side. But the worst part is the fact that they're slippery as heck. So moving around on the roof and, uh, and what have you, uh, one had to be pretty careful in the build. It's interesting that in that time period, um, on the frontier particularly, natives and, and settlers dress pretty commonly. They, they um, adapted, well, obviously the Europeans, the moccasins, but not only that, they adapt things like leggings, even breech clouts. And there's a number of first-person accounts that would indicate that um, you could essentially, aside from their skin, not tell them apart. So the natives um, wanted wool, and in fact, wool was the number one, about, accounted for about 70% of the trade industry in North America during that time period. So yeah, they would wear uh, long hunter shirts, and we would wear their breech coats. So anyway, I just find that quite interesting. Anyway, I'm going to sit here for most of the day and keep nice and warm by these fires and hopefully uh, by later this afternoon I'll be able to start digging out a hole.
so yesterday I finished up with my uh, with uh, all my four posts so the fires were able to melt enough frost that I could etch a hole and that wasn't easy but we got them in and I've got them plumbed just by eyesight both vertically this way and this way uh, and I've got them braced in here temporarily sort of looks like a dog's breakfast but it's uh, it's made it rigid I've got my four notches made here uh, for the corresponding sill log and I'm working on my notches now for them uh, so they say a sign of a good carpenter is one that can hide his mistakes well trust me I've got lots of mistakes to hide but I've got a sort of a fairly significant screw up at the far end uh, my log tapered too much and so I tried to find a happy medium but uh, anyway I might have to block up the far end but I think the first three here are going to fit pretty tight so I'm going to work on the next couple of notches and see how this fits rather a cold day today. The natives call it the uh, month of February, the month of the snapping trees and they're snapping and cracking all about me. And I normally don't like to work with gloves on but today's uh, not an option I'm afraid. it is an option. <laughs> 